<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People who live in small, quiet towns, what's the scariest thing that's happened to you there? A while ago, circa 2004 maybe, there was a car accident and someone's head flew out the window. When the cops got there, they were confused because everyone had their head attached. Turns out, one of the guys in the wreck, pretty sure he was killed during the wreck, decapitated his girlfriend, threw her body in the canal and took her head with him for god knows what reason. I deliver pizza in a small town. Last year, some kids thought that it would be funny to give a false address. We do security callbacks to try and prevent prank calls, but there was nothing in their behavior that suggested that it was anything other than some teenagers ordering pizza. I knocked on the door to the farmhouse and was promptly greeted by the business end of a shotgun. They screamed at me to get off their property or they'd shoot me. I thought that I was actually going to die delivering of pizza. Grew up in a small town of 75 people. We had a guy break into a farmhouse, tied up the wife and she recognized him despite his mask so she asked why he was doing this. He got scared and took off. Locals in the area went into lockdown. The police found him hiding in his house. When they searched his house they found loads of stolen items. Evidently, he was breaking into local houses and stealing women slash girls clothing. They set up a table at the community center and asked people to come check if they recognized anything. He had one of my sister's swimsuits and a couple pairs of my underwear, I was about 12. Someone broke into my garage and then drove a knife into the wall by the door clicker thing. It was a town of about 2000. It was so unsettling because there's a good chance I've seen whoever did it. And they've seen me. And they broke into my space and scared the heck out of me. And I probably smiled at them at the local co-op or something. In a bigger town you'd be like oh it was probably random and maybe it was for me. But I probably interacted with the person who did it. I live in La Verna, Texas. Craziest thing that happened to us was actually recently. An even smaller sister town of ours, Sutherland Springs, was massacred by a dick bag with horrible reputation around town. We lost members of both towns from the massacre. And I live right down the road from the church. I would never think that something like that can happen in my own backyard. About seven years ago we had a nutcase abduct a 13-year-old girl, kill her family, chop them up, put them in trash bags and hide them in a tree like 30 foot up. She was found when the police tracked him down, and raided his house a few days later. I was staying with my aunt and that morning went out to get donuts and got caught nearly in the middle of it. I was 14-ish at the time and she lived less than a block away. My room faces the street and I had the window open because it was super hot that night. Around 2 AM, I was laying in bed when I briefly heard what sounded like loud breathing coming from outside and then suddenly my dog threw herself against the window, barking and growling like crazy. I grabbed the bed I keep under my bed, woke up my dad and we checked outside. All we found was a set of shoe prints in the dirt in front of my window so we just went back inside and locked everything. Now that window hasn't been unlocked in two years has a couple of large rose bushes in front of it and my family spoils my dog even more than we did before. Lived in a very small town all my life up until last year. Every once in a while, body parts would wash up on the shore of local elderly women who were murdered. No one ever found the killers. A lot of drunk drivers, and I almost got hit and kidnapped by one when I was 18. Was running and screaming at them to leave me alone slash screaming for someone to help me out slash etc. Everyone ignored us lol. Oh also, my mom had a stalker who watched over her while she slept in, eventually, started watching over me as a child. One birthday in particular, I was having a party with my friends I was probably about 8 and my mom suddenly ran out the door. Apparently he was standing at the window watching me and my friends. Eventually she was able to get a restraining order against him, and he moved to the house right at the edge of the restraining order. Which was still in town. Tried to do more to prevent being around him but she finally gave up when she kept being told he was technically abiding by the restraining order and we lived in fear for a while until we both eventually moved. My dad still lives there though. I don't live there anymore, but I grew up in a tiny rural little place. Everyone had a lot of land, so houses were far apart. When I was a teenager, someone murdered a man, cut his body up, and drove it out to that tiny rural town and dumped the pieces down a hillside. The guy who did it wasn't from the area, because if he had been, he would have realized he'd picked the absolute worst place to dump a body. Lots of hunters lived out that way, and since it was the country, they let their dogs roam free. Didn't take more than a few hours for someone's beagle to drag home part of an arm. 
They managed to find most of the body over the next couple of days, they never did find all of it, but assumed other animals got the other bits. The guy got caught and went to prison for it. It was surreal, though, seeing all the cops and news crews out there. The body got dumped about two miles away from my house. Small town, low literacy, circa 1990 when countrywide satanic panic was high. Somehow, a family was accused of being satanists slash witches slash whatever. True facts, they had put gray shingles on their house. The wife lost a pregnancy. The dad was a hippie type with long hair. They didn't take their toddler to church. They had a wheelchair-bound mentally disabled relative who they occasionally cared for. The rest of the rumor seemed to spring from nowhere and only took a month to basically take over the town. They were accused of their house hiding the entrance to a massive underground arena where human sacrifices were made. They were accused of cannibalism, rape, and torture. I was in kindergarten, and teachers were reading from these anti-Satan booklets in school. My parents were keyed into what was going on when they were sent of books to educate themselves. My parents didn't buy into it, but they were the minority. Churches held meetings where gruesome descriptions of what might be happening were described, and experts were brought in. One sold pricey holy water said to ward off the witches. Kids talked about their dads melting down silver jewelry to tip bullets, I guess in case they were also werewolves? A ton of the rumors that circulated seemed barred from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, rooms filled with body parts and dead family members. Furniture made from corpses. Soon a rumor started that the family planned to kidnap a child for sacrifice. Their house was staked out, surrounded by hunters' tree stands and armed volunteers in hunters' camo. They cancelled field trips and recess. Our school was surrounded to by men armed to the teeth and prepared to shoot at shadows. Some weren't even local, they came from nearby towns to join in taking out the witches. They weren't allowed on school property with their rifles, so they patrolled the perimeter. Finally one interrogated a parent coming to pick up a kid by pointing a loaded rifle in his face and the police stepped in. Then it ramped up and kids were saying their parents were going to get the witches. The street outside the house was closed off by police, angry locals were arrested trying to get past the barrier. My family was involved in helping to get the accused out of town, a secret to this day. The accused family left with whatever they could carry, leaving everything else behind, there were fizzling outrage when they disappeared, but people were convinced that they had instead disappeared into the cave supposedly under the house. People broke in, searched and trashed the place, then the house burnt to the ground. No caves. It was over as fast as it happened, and only much later I found out the details from my family. In high school, I had friends whose family still had bottled holy water. None of them doubted they had averted a satanic takeover. Not much crime happens but some wicked accidents do. Two teenagers driving home from a game and they were drag racing another car. Due to high speeds they lost control passing a semi and were decapitated. They were siblings so that was rough on their family. Also, last Christmas a guy made a drug deal to a teen in my backyard. They depart and a few minutes later dude shows up with a woman. I watched through a window as they cased my house. I grabbed an airsoft gun that looks like the real thing, tapped it on the window and smiled real big. They didn't stick around. I had called the cops beforehand, gave a good description and those keystone motherfuckers drove right past them. I watched the whole thing. Girl that was getting aggressive towards me wasn't happy when I blocked her on Facebook. One night as I was walking home I hear an engine revving down the street. Here she comes, roaring down the 20 mile per hour street at nearly 50, nearly clipping me as she zoomed past. She slams on the brakes, rolls her window down, and gives me the finger before zooming off again in the opposite direction back the way she came. Either that or when I heard footsteps in my house and walked around to discover no one was home. Checked every room. Spooky. When my friends and I were around 12 or 13, there was this bookstore downtown that we used to visit. My friend's dad worked at a restaurant a few blocks away so we would wander around downtown while he was working. We went into this bookstore one day and the owner started chatting with us, very friendly, but he said some kind of weird things, like he told us he had a fountain behind his store if we wanted to go swimming with him. Then he asked if we were hungry and told us he had some spaghettios in the back if we wanted to come eat some. It kind of weirded us out so we left, but since we were so young we didn't really think much of it other than it was weird. Then a few months later it was on the news that he had raped a young girl in his store. It's terrifying to think we ran around and hung out on that same street, or even how things could have gone differently if one of us had gone into the store alone. This didn't happen to me, but the whole story is just unnerving from beginning to end, so the details are seared into my memory, in a fairly small town in Maine, a dog groomer answers a knock at her door one morning. 
a strange man stands there, smelling of gasoline and pig manure and asking for help with a pregnant dog in distress. The pregnant dog has a pup stuck in the birth canal, the man, seemingly in an attempt to extricate the pup, has pulled the pup's head off. I'm not sure exactly when in the timeline, but the dog groomer sent something off about this man and has her young daughter hide in a dog kennel. Sure enough, the man starts attacking the dog groomer, and she is only able to fend him off with a sliver of glass from a picture that was smashed in the struggle. At the time I read this story, the guy hadn't been caught. The specificity of the man's smell, the kid hiding in a dog kennel, and the horrible detail about the poor puppy, yikes. My hometown is about 800 in population now. It's right on the Ohio River and everyone knows everyone. We have a place there people started calling Witch's Castle I think in like the early 80s before I was born. It's actually just what's left of a house that burnt down but kids made it into a scary place to go but a group of high school girls talked a 12 year old, who they were jealous of, into going there to start torturing her and then throw her in the trunk, driving around to eat with her in the trunk, stopping at the mall for a bit, and eventually burning her alive. Her name was Shonda Scherer. It was national news and there are books about it. Some of the girls were recently released from prison I think. I believe it happened in 92 but I was a baby. When I would tell anyone I was from Utica, Indiana they would immediately ask me questions about it. Super sad story. People who live in places that aren't tiny and out in the woods have no idea how terrifying silence can be in the woods. I've been out numerous times where the woods have fallen silent. You can't see it, you can't hear it, you can't smell it, but you sure as fuck can feel it. It's watching you, it's following you. The hair on the back of your dog is standing straight up and you still have a few miles before you are home. You just keep your head on a swivel and for sake you just keep moving. I live in a small town, one of those that everyone knows everyone kind of towns. One night my dad, his girlfriend, and two kids were over from out of state. In total there were about eight or nine of us there. About nine o'clock at night there was a knock at the door. My brother-in-law goes to answer it and there is a man there out of breathe and speaking incoherently. We gathered that he was asking to borrow one of our cars. He wouldn't take no for an answer. Next thing I knew my brother-in-law had pulled his pistol from the cabinet next to the door. Now I'll take a moment to say that the previous 30 minutes or so we had all been showing my dad our weapons collects. There were a range of pistols, rifles and shotguns. Pretty much the worst time for someone to pull this. Even though there was no ammo except for the pistol my brother-in-law had, having three or four rifles aimed at you would be scary as shit. Anyway, the dude is persistent. We gather that some amount of drugs was in his system. He ends up putting his foot in the door preventing it from being closed. After some crazy amount of calmness from my brother-in-law, the dude ends up leaving. We keep hearing noises outside. Apparently he kept checking our cars and even tried to start our four-wheeler which was broken at the time. We call the cops and let them know what happened. Since we live in a small town, our city's police jurisdiction doesn't extend all the way out to where we live and county PD responded. Luckily they had been looking for this guy for a bit, so they were close by. It was crazy seeing six or seven cop cars in our front lawn with search dogs in the lot. They leave a cop in the front as the rest go out searching. An hour or so later he leaves and we weren't sure exactly why. But we ended up calling the non-emergency number to figure out what's going on cause we were all still scared shitless. They found the dude about a mile or so into the forest behind our house. To add to it all, they set the house alarm that night which is supposed to be more for when you're out of town as there are internal motion sensors. So about 230 in the morning the alarm ends up going off, loud as shit. The cat set of the hallway sensor. And that was the end of that thankfully. I dated this girl in high school for a while. Things didn't go well, but I was around her friends enough to sort of know them pretty well. One of them, who was super nice to me and always friendly, even took my side in the breakup, ended up being murdered by a boyfriend. It happened a year after we both had graduated so I hadn't kept touch with her or anything. If I remember correctly, they spent quite a long time looking for her because he had separated her body and hide different sections in different locations fairly far apart. She was a very nice girl and very beautiful. She had the whole world ahead of her but she ended up falling in love with a psychopath. My little town has a highway that runs through it, so naturally we get a lot of visitors. Well, a fugitive checked into the one hotel in town. The cops got a tip he was there with his girlfriend, so they decided to pay him a visit. He takes his girlfriend hostage inside the hotel room and has a showdown with the cops. They had to get SWAT teams from a town an hour away. On the third day of the showdown, the SWAT team broke into the hotel and gunned down the fugitive. And my tiny town hasn't had anything interesting happen since. 
the entire police force, of like three full-time officers, were kinda famous for a couple days afterwards in town and my town made the papers in cities that were two hours away, a big deal in a small town. When I was 18 I lived in this shitty apartment building. One if only two in the whole town I lived with a few of my high school friends and we basically just got drunk and played video games when we weren't at work. All hours of the night. One night a guy knocks on our door looking for his friend. He hadn't seen her in a week and she lived in one of the other 20 apartments in the building. We said we had not seen her and wished him luck tracking her down. I suppose it would help to know this was a super small town, everyone knew everyone. We forgot about the guy until on my lunch the next day I walked home only to find every cop in our town in the parking lot. The missing girl from the night before had apparently been murdered a week prior and the killer had been holding his own wife and kids hostage for days because they had found out. When the guy's wife got out of her house she called the cops and they found the woman's body shortly after. She had been dead in the apartment for a week and everyone in our town lost their minds. I suppose to people in cities or larger towns this isn't that out of place but in a town that small it was crazy. We knew the victim and her killer and their families. I think the only other murder in or near the town had been a guy shooting his girlfriend in a jealous rage maybe 20 years earlier. Urban slash suburban transplant who moved to a very rural town in 2012. In the course of almost five years, there have numerous CPS inquiries at the school I teach at, which seemed abnormal having started my career in a suburban area. The most rattling instances as follows. One, two years ago, Two elementary students at a neighboring district were found locked in dog cages by their parents after a truancy investigation. Two, this year, a student I taught shot his brother in his sleep. Then, dragged his brother's body into a shed before stealing his brother's car and going on a joyride. He later returned home to await his mother's arrival, and, without a hint of remorse or emotion relayed what he had done to his mother. Three, this could very well be small-town rumors, but, apparently, my neighbors across the road have been suspected of running meth via their cattle. My guess would be smuggling by inserting bags in their anuses, if it is the case, they do only transport their cattle in the dead of night, but that may be a matter of courtesy by not congesting the road with unnecessary traffic. Needless to say, I'm ready to get back to civilization. When I was 14 to 16 I started working at a convenience store slash gas station. Not long after I started this man who was a garbage man, would come in almost every day. He would chit chat every time and always buy the same thing. He was in his 30s. He would always say hey trouble when he walked in. By the time I was 15 to 16, he was still coming every day and talking but then the weird, awkward comments started happening, didn't really think too much of it cause it happened sometimes, but then he started asking me to dinners and stuff, which I respectfully declined. Until he started asking every time he came in. I started to get a bit short with him hoping that he would just go somewhere else. Eventually when I went into one shift my bosses, who were from India, pulled me aside and asked me to tell my friends to stop calling and asking when my shifts were. I immediately got uncomfortable and assured them that everyone who I'm close with wouldn't call and ask those things. Then they said it sounded like a middle-aged man on the phone and sure enough he admitted it was him. I was livid and asked my bosses to not give that info out to anyone who calls. Four to EU months, he ended up following me home and found out where I lived. One night someone broke into my car and stole my book bag. Somehow he found out and delivered the bag to my house directly and tried to make his way in. I thanked him for the bag and pretended I was on my way out, my parents weren't home from work yet, later I realized he's the one who took the bag. To sum up, I eventually quit the job and started working in another town about a half hour away, didn't see him for two years I'm pretty sure a family friend that knew him had a word with him. Then he walked into the store I was working at, changed his looks completely to the point I had no idea it was him, I only realized it was him when he said hey trouble. Needless to say I went to the back and let one of the other girls help him. Haven't seen him since. Lived in a small mountain town for a year or so population about 7,400 now, was probably closer to 5k when I lived there the town had a tiny AM radio station of which I was a DJ. There were five employees total. Me my boss, another DJ and two salespeople. That was it. So it wasn't uncommon to be working sometimes in the middle of the day and be the only person in the station. Well one such day right in the middle of the week, I'm recording some ads when these two dudes walk in. Both wearing long black trench coats, it was the middle of summer, I stop what I'm doing and come out to greet them and see what they need. Only one of them speaks to me. The other guy spent the entire time carefully looking at all the stuff we had on the walls like he was analyzing everything. The dude who spoke to me asked me a lot of random questions about the station and me. How long has the station been here? 
How long have you been in radio? Etc. Nothing about what he said or any of his questions was that weird. But the way he was asking them in his tone and while staring at me with kind of a vacant glassy-eyed gaze was firing off all sorts of something ain't right feels in my gut. I start to walk to another part of the main office area and start to sort through papers like I'm getting ready to get back to work on something. When I walk behind the main desk, I can see out the window into the parking lot. I look out the window and can see their car. Standing outside of their car are two more motherfuckers in black trench coats. Both of them are just standing there and staring at the entrance to the radio station. Now I am internally freaking them out. I start to get a bit curt with the guy speaking to me and let them know that if they don't need anything else that I really need to be getting back to work. The guy creepily says something like of course. We don't mean to be bothering you while still giving me that pod person stare. They finally walk out the door, but didn't leave right away. One of them started smoking a cigarette and they continued to stay outside all talking and gesturing towards the building. They ended up getting in their car and driving away a few minutes after that. I tell my manager when he gets back like 15 minutes later. We never figured out exactly who they were, but he had a guess. Apparently this town had a militant branch of Jehovah's Witnesses that operated more like a cult than your usual JW weirdness. Thing is, in such a small town you'd think I'd have seen one of those guys at some point later. I never saw any of the four of them in my remaining time there. More sad than scary. My hometown in South Dakota has just over 100 people in it and my family is rather affluent within the town. My grandma is on the town council and worked as the town's finance officer for nearly 20 years. My grandfather was the maintenance man for just as long and my father was president of the community club for nearly 10 years before he passed. Basically, I know everyone in town. One gentleman I was always told to avoid was Joe. Sweet older man with a serious drinking problem. But sometimes I'd be out at the town park or just listening to music under the water tower when he would pop by and make small talk was always polite if a little hard to understand. Well the winter of my senior year, my grandma makes a comment that she hasn't seen Joe at the bar, part of her job as finance officer was managing the town's bar, in a while. I don't think much of it. As long as he has a bottle to keep him company, Joe mostly keeps to himself. About a week later though, my grandpa was up at the water tower doing some regular maintenance when he saw Joe's jacket. And not much further into the trees on the other side of the alley from the water tower was Joe's frozen body. Turns out his old lady had been mad at him for something and chased him out of the house with a knife. He'd started to go to the bar but given the nature of small towns, the bar closed early a lot, especially in the winter if business was really slow, and he ended up passing out in the alley freezing to death in the process. Mostly, it was sad to know that this sweet man who'd only ever heard his own liver, died like that, alone and cold and so close to all of his neighbors but feeling like he had nowhere to go because folks in town didn't like him. And he was so close to his house too that it really broke my heart. The alleyway where he was found divides Main Street from Milwaukee where his house was. But it was also creepy knowing that his body had sat there so close to my house, a block away, five houses, and that I could have just as easily been the one to find him. Plus his old lady still lives in the house. They deemed his death an accident but no one saw much of her after that. We only knew she was still alive because she always had her trash out on Tuesdays. I think the town has gotten worse since I left so I doubt that this would make as much of a wave nowadays, but when I was 17 I was tried as an adult for an aggravated assault after putting my father in a wheelchair and breaking a lot of shit. Nobody thought I deserved the felony charge. Which is kind of scary in its own way. In 2007 we lived in a small town in Kentucky near Fort Campbell. My now ex had just deployed to Iraq and the kids and I, who had moved there seven months prior were settling into the school year. We heard through parents of their classmates who worked in the emergency room at the local hospital that a woman had been brought in who had been raped and stabbed in the neck with a butter knife, in a remote area about 12 miles from where we lived and her 5-year-old, her 14-year-old and her 17-year-old had been murdered when they came home from school that day. The guy had slashed their throats since they had come across him attacking their mother. But he was stupid as he had committed this crime using his work truck and in his work uniform which was a direct TV technician slash installer so catching him wasn't difficult. The woman survived and they actually did a TV show on her on the ID channel. The really creepy part about this was the guy actually lived in the town that I lived in and he lived less than a mile from my house. We passed his house every single day on the way home from school and the kicker was he was the direct TV installer who had installed my system. The guy had been inside my house not 7 months earlier. I live in an old house that was converted into apartments in a small sleepy town. One morning I was walking my dog. I was around 25 at the time but looked young, no makeup, 
hair in a ponytail, etc., and a car pulled over and the person inside asked me for directions. I kept a safe distance as I tried to describe how to get to his destination, when I finally looked down and saw he was not wearing any pants. Okay, disgusting but not overly scary. Like 8 months later it was a chilly January morning, like literally 5 degrees, and it was pitch dark. Again I was walking my dog before work and as I was climbing the stairs onto the porch to go back inside, the same guy steps out, he was already on the porch waiting for me, pants around his ankles, touching himself and asking me how I'm doing. I ran inside to the foyer and slammed the door but at that time the door did not have a lock, so he just crashed in after me. Once that happened I thought for sure I was going to die. But I managed to run upstairs to my apartment and lock it and dial 911. I also yelled and screamed hoping my neighbors would wake up, they didn't. The police eventually caught him and he spent like 3 months in jail. He's been arrested bunches of times before and after this incident. He later tried to lure a 14 years old into his car. I think he is in jail now. I hope. The first murder in 100 years in my hometown happened in my neighborhood. Some guy got shot over drug money. Then in high school I was robbed at knife point by some local heroin addicts. Apparently they heard that I was selling weed and would be flush with cash. People just watched these two guys push me around, pull a knife, then grab my wallet. Nobody did shit to help me. I know they saw what went down because it was the biggest gossip at school the next day, up until the faculty heard and the police got involved. These happened in two neighboring towns of about 3,000 people. I grew up in a tiny Oregon town called Chiloquin, last I checked, the population was 750. It's a reservation that is mostly populated by Native Americans. During a powwow they hold a few times a year, I was accused of hitting one of the popular native's little sister, A. I didn't, I just pissed her friend off cause I took a toy from her that she was hitting me with. They were both 17. B. I was one of the few whites that grew up in that town, I never thought I'd ever see a Frankenstein type mob in real life but I did and they were legitimately after my ass and I was terrified. The end result was a severe ass beating that landed me in the hospital. My grandpa used to live in a small town in southern Michigan. It was a small cottage of a lake which a bunch of people shared. My family was down there for a couple of days on 4th of July until I saw the most horrific sight. People were launching fireworks of a pontoon boat in the middle of the lake and one of them malfunctioned thus blowing up everything on the boat. The boat immediately had a bunch of flaming bodies jumping in the lake while the boat was sinking like the Titanic. About 10 people were on it at the time and 7 of them caught fire and escaped with second degree burns. One of them died in the explosion and two others had no injuries. The next day, you could see body parts floating down the lake or on the shore from the dead guy. His body was never found and they pulled the boat out the next day. I was in my early 20s and lived by myself, in a small house, in a town of about 1000 people. One Friday night at about 10 or 11 pm I was laying in bed watching TV and the power goes out. About 5 seconds later there is a massive explosion, cracking windows knocking stuff off of shelves, it was insanely loud. I thought someone trying to mess with me threw a stick of dynamite outside my bedroom window. I jumped up and grabbed a coat and ran out the back door hoping to catch the asshole that just did that. When I walked around the front of the house I saw a guy that I had never seen before standing in the middle of the street starring toward the west looking up in the sky. I remember yelling something at him like, what was that or what are you doing and he didn't respond. He just stood there and didn't even look at me. I was still shaken by the explosion and now frustrated that this guy isn't answering me so I start to walk out into the road and I notice what he's looking at. I saw a mushroom cloud of fire that extended miles into the sky. It looked like something you see on TV and I could feel the heat off of it. I look back at the guy to ask him what happened and he is running down the street in the opposite direction. There was a chemical plant a few miles out of town that had blown up. The first thing I did was run back into the house to put some pants on. When I came back out you could smell the chemicals in the air so I knew I need to get as far away as possible. I hopped in the truck and started trying to find all my family to get them out of there. Everyone was on the same page and we all evacuated within minutes. The town had a mandatory evacuation for I think a day or two. The explosion ended up killing 6 people that worked in the plant. Not really scary, more creepy as hell. There is a costume store on the main street, like, proper vintage, not your usual toys or a stuff. Halloween is not a particularly big thing and there is absolutely not enough foot traffic to justify how it makes any money, cafes and bars have a hard enough time. There are literally doll slash clown mask faces up on shelves as you can see inside. Anyhow, it is always open and nor anyone I have talked to has ever seen someone open, 
close or enter slash leave with any costume, ever. Last summer I was walking down the road and this guy with a long grey ponytail strolls out of the shop and steps a few feet onto the sidewalk, stopping abruptly. He reaches into his inside jacket pocket for what I assume is a cigarette packet. He takes out a paper windmill, Google image it and you'll know what I mean, blows on it, smirks happily, then walks back into the store. Seriously, what the actual f There was a guy in his I'd say late 20s who rode his bike everywhere. He was a good guy never bothered anybody. Smoked pot like nobody's business and mouthed off but he was still a give you the shirt off my back kind of guy. One day he comes up missing. His stepdad mom sisters everyone is worried. He never left and just didn't come back. Just wasn't like him. Nobody knew what happened. His stepdad hears that someone is going around bragging about how he killed him. Stepdad tells cops cops do nothing. Stepdad finally says either you do something or I will. Cops bring guy in to question him. He leads them to his body. Turns out he stopped by guy and asked if he wanted to go get high. He says sure jumps in the car. He takes him to the woods shoots him in the chest I believe it was, raped him and left him. Most effed up thing to ever happen in my little back road town. Okay so, I live in a tiny town that is right on the Appalachian Trail. A few years ago, I was 17, babysitting in a house that is right next to a hiker hostel. I stayed overnight due to the mother working the night shift. Everything was a normal night, just like every other. We watched a movie, did homework, then laid down on our couches. Me on one, her on the other, around 1 to 2 a.m., I heard a noise. Not fully awake, I sit up, trying to see what the damn cat knocked over this time. It was not the cat. The way the house was set up, the kitchen, dining room and living room was sort of an open design, with wide doorways, like twice as wide as a normal door. I could see the dining room and kitchen from where I was on the couch. I saw a figure of a person moving around, then start walking towards me. Before I registered what was happening was real, this figure was in the living room. The couches were in an upside down L shape, I was up, fully awake, and ready to go once I was sure this was real. This guy leaned over the child sleeping on the other couch and tried to push her of the couch so he could lay down. Obviously she woke up, terrified. So I grabbed her, pulled her behind me, and told this dude, that he needed to leave. When it was obvious that he was drunk, and wasn't going to move anytime soon, I told the child to go outside, they'll be right behind her, but to go. Lucky this house was like three houses down from mine. So we walked up to my house and woke up my grandfather. He freaks out, thinking someone is in his house, but then calms down a little bit when he realizes that it's the child's house. While he goes down to said house to see for himself, I am sitting on the phone with 911 trying to tell them that it is not the house I am calling from, but one a few houses down. After about 30 minutes, the cops finally show up, and we all walk down to said house. Once there, the guy is still asleep on the couch where we left him. So the cops do their thing, and that's that, right? Nah man, the best part comes the day after. We were just hanging around, and hear a knock on the door. The mother goes and answers it, lo and behold, it's the same guy. He introduces himself, and apologizes. Apparently he woke up in jail, and had no memory of what happened at all. The cops are the ones that filled him in. He came personally to apologize to the girls he scared, and to ask to look in the backyard for his phone. A couple years ago my dad had a scanner in the kitchen and I was up one night and I was getting a drink and I just so happened to listen to the scanner and I could hear the police going off about something. It piqued my interest so I stood there for a bit listening and the police had been apparently chasing something around a community. The way they described it was that it long hair, crawling on arms, had no legs and that it was supposedly with them. The police were legit chasing something not human. A bit after that it died down and I asked my cousin who was at the station that night and he said that the guys who came back after chasing it were pale and shocked. Ironically like they saw a ghost. They gave a much better story and said that they answered to a call in a community because someone was jumping from roof to roof. So they answered the call and went to check, when they checked out the house that it was reported at, the thing had been crawling in the backyard and they said that when they looked at it they immediately ran back to their cruiser and called back up, they proceeded to chase it with five cruisers on its ass. They chased it for two hours and it led them to a forest area and that's when they stopped because by then they had realized that it was a spirit luring them into wherever it came from. I honestly have so much more stories to tell that goes on in my town and it's not the first time something like that has been around the communities. Didn't happen in my town, but a few miles away, the Pike County Massacre. On April 22, 2016 eight members of the Roden family were found shot dead, execution style, 
in four different households in Pike County, Ohio. This shooting has led to the largest criminal investigation in Ohio history in terms of resources and manpower. Despite happening over a year ago there is barely a timeline set up for the murders. It is suspected that multiple shooters entered the, the road and family homes within a short period of time and systematically executed all members of the family save the children, a four-day-old, six-month-old, and three-year-old. Clear effort was made in planning this sophisticated operation and even involved an effort to eliminate any incriminating forensic evidence. Investigations have discovered a large marijuana and cockfighting operation near the road and homes although it is unknown if they are connected to their deaths. A similar case was uncovered in Kenton County, Kentucky in which the victims, a well-known drug dealer and his girlfriend, were shot execution style in their bed. Similarities with the Roden murders include connections with drugs, no forced entry, and all children being left unharmed. The Roden trailer homes were confiscated by the Attorney General and are still being investigated. Despite the enormous amounts of resources being poured into this case little has come about. The most recent development was the investigation into the Wagner family as Edward Wagner is the ex-boyfriend to one of the victims and father to one of the few surviving children. The other popular theory involves connects with the Mexican drug cartel as both the Pike County and Kenton County shootings involve drugs. The Attorney General believes that residents of the area around the crime scene know more than they're letting on and they are afraid to come forward with the truth. This case is truly insane and the amount of manpower bring thrown into it and resulting in basically nothing is incredulous. If you want to know more I suggest you go look it up. I can't give it justice in my short summary.